بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Why is there evil, suffering and pain in this world? Trials, calamities, problems, suffering, pain and disasters It brings about a different reaction from different people Now there are some people who believe in Allah but after going through hardship and some difficulty they reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah mentions in the Quran that this is something that happens. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ Now, they are those people who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a condition. So there is a conditional worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ اِطَّمَأَنَّ بِهِ If life is good, he is happy and he'll be happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ فِتْنَةٌ انْقَلَبَ عَلَىٰ وَجْهِهِ خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ But if life is not good, if a fitna happens, then he flips around and he switches his faith around in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he ends up losing this world and the next. Now this is the ultimate loss. Now the wisdom of trying to understand the problems of this world the rationalization that we as human beings are struggling with, why is there so much bloodshed, torture, misery, pain, persecution? How can we understand innocent human beings dying all around the world, all the time through diseases, plagues, viruses, sicknesses, civil wars, tragedies? You know, those that we call the act of God, like earthquakes, tsunamis, floods, some we call the acts of men, like civil wars, you know, what's happening in Syria, Kashmir, Burma, Palestine, etc. Now, this rationalization, we humans, we Muslims, is something that every faith tradition has struggled with. And this is one of the fundamental problems of theology as well. Now, philosophers and theologians from every religion and background are trying to answer how we can reconcile the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the suffering of human beings. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all this to take place? Now, each, each religion, philosophy, tradition has its own answers. However, it is impossible for us humans to fully comprehend this. We learn that in the Qur'an this question of evil and suffering is something which goes back to even before the creation of man. It goes way back before the time of the philosophers. Now the question of trying to understand why there is pain, suffering, bloodshed and evil taking place in this world. This is a question that was asked of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. We learn in Surah Baqarah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announced to the angels, to the worlds before us, that I'm creating a new creation called man. So instantaneously the angels asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when man was described and the effects of man was understood even before man came down to this earth and did anything, the angels questioned Now this question is not challenging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's authority rather trying to comprehend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom even the angels asked the same question Oh Allah, why would you create a new creation who is going to cause fitna and fasad? It's going to shed blood. They're going to kill one another. Innocent people will die. Why will you cause this pain and suffering when we are here? We are so pure, holy, praising you all the time, worshipping you 24-7. We never disobey you. We never cause any bloodshed. We never cause any civil wars. There's no pain and suffering in the world of the angels. Why would you do that, O oh Allah? Now what was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's response? He didn't try to rationalize the existence of evil. You know, for example, the reason for evil is number one, number two, number three, etc. Allah said to the angels, a, speech, a species who are far more intelligent than us, they're more pure and holy than us. Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. That my knowledge is more than your knowledge. My wisdom is more than your wisdom. You will never understand why there is pain and suffering. So from the very beginning, even before the creation of man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
you cannot understand fully why there is pain and suffering, why innocent people are dying and being killed, starvation and earthquakes, etc., etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom said that you are going to have to trust me. Now again, it goes back to the type of person you are. You know, how you approach the question of evil, of pain and suffering in this world. If you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will find some kind of wisdom and some type of comfort and rationalization. So in this world, however, you will never be able to fully understand why there is pain and suffering and evil in this world. Now, if you don't have faith and humility, then when you are presented with evil, you will end up rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like Iblis, like Shaytan. You either reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's existence or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's worship. Now, shaitan had no humility. He had arrogance and pride. He said, I'm better. Why would you create another creation? Now, if you have humility, you will find some wisdoms. The human mind is limited in its capacity to understand. We cannot understand everything fully. No human being in this world lives a carefree life. If the pain is not physical, it's a mental pain. If it's not mental, then it's emotional. If it's not emotional, then it's financial. Every human experiences some kind of catastrophe, disaster, calamity. Every once in a while, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أَوَلَا يَرَوْنَ أَنَّهُمْ يُفْتَنُونَ فِي كُلِّ عَامٍ مَرَّةً أَوْ مَرَّتَيْنَ that Don't they see every year we test them with major tests? One, once or twice a year. Now this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this world is not the abode of peace, the next world is. Now those people who end up rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they don't understand why there is pain and suffering, it is not that by rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they have found the answer as well. Now can you understand why human beings kill now? Why humans torture, cause pain and suffering to other human beings? How thousands and millions have been massacred? So when you reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you create a series of answers, a series of questions that you have no answer for. For example, what is life? Why am I here? Who created us? How do I live in this world? What's going to happen after death? All of these questions have no answer once you reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you think that you run away from one question, the question of evil, but you end up running into a long list of infinitely more complex questions that you have no answer for. Now as for us believers, the list of questions mentioned above, you know, what is life, what is my purpose, who created us, how do I live, what's going to happen after death, we have the answer for these. However, there's one question that will that we will however there's one question now why is the evil the answer for this we'll never be able to fully understand. We just need to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah we'll go through a few wisdoms of why there is evil, pain, suffering in this world. Now we as human beings and Muslims we should understand and appreciate that life is is a life of trial and tribulations. Now, of the wisdoms for the existence of calamities, pain and suffering in this world is, number one, to demonstrate rububiya, lordship, to demonstrate that there is a Rabb and you are not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are not the all-powerful God. Allah is that entity who is all-powerful. Allah decides, not me and you. Now, life is not according to what you want. There must be a Rabb. So when you face calamities, or you go through any types of hardship that you don't want, you understand and appreciate that there is an entity who is all-powerful and that we are not all-powerful. Now this leads on to the second point. The second point, the second wisdom is to appreciate that we are the abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the slaves of Allah, we are not Rabb. Allah says in the Quran, لا يسألوا عما يفعلوا وهم يسألون That no one has the right to challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about why he did something. Rather, Allah will ask them why they did what they did. Now, nobody will challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody will take the hisab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the ones whose hisab will be done. So calamities and disasters show us who is Rabb and who is the Abd, the slave. 
Now, of the wisdoms of calamities and pains is the religiosity that comes out of them. The iman, the taqwa, the ikhlas, the sincerity, the inab, turning to Allah, the duas that come with it. When we're in a calamity, our hearts go soft. We turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We repent from our sins. We raise our hands up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We feel humble. We feel in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are nothing. We raise our hands and we, we invoke, we beseech, we cry out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That humility is the essence of Iman and why we have been created. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I've only created man and jinn to worship me. So when a calamity brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then in reality that calamity is a blessing for us. Why? Because there is no calamity for the one who is attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The worst calamity is to be distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a worldly pain, if a suffering that is temporary brings us close to the eternal, then that temporary pain was a blessing in disguise meant for us. Now, of the wisdoms is to bring through pain and internal issues the best of akhlaq between people as well. No, the akhlaq of controlling anger, the akhlaq of forgiving, the akhlaq of sabr, demonstrating patience, the akhlaq of being the better of two. So when someone wrongs you, does zulum upon you, backbites you, then you are the better of the two. So that calamity will demonstrate who is the better of the two. Now another one of the wisdoms of pain and suffering and calamities is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows third parties to help out in that calamity. Allah tests people who are not suffering. Are they going to get involved with the people who are suffering? Now how are we when people are hungry? Yeah, we are not hungry. We are having food. Are we going to share our food with those who need it? How are we when people don't have money? They don't have shelter. When people need our help, are we going to help them out? Now this is one of the wisdoms. How will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the one who sponsors an orphan when there are no orphans to sponsor? How will Allah reward the one who feeds the hungry, helps the poor, when there are no poor and hungry people to be fed and helped? Of the wisdoms is that Allah tests people with other people. And those that are being tested are not the only ones being tested. Those that, are being, those that are not being tested are in fact being tested but with a, with a different type of test. Now every one of us is being tested right now but in different ways. S some of us are being tested the test of luxury whilst others are being tested the test of deprivation. Some of us are being tested the test of access. access. We have more food, more time, more money. Others are being tested because they don't have that. Now those that have must share and give and fight and defend on behalf of those that don't. Now another wisdom is appreciating the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The blessings of afiyah. Afiyah means well-being. The blessings of not having any problems. It is only when we are sick do we appreciate the blessings when we weren't sick. It is only when we have a headache we appreciate what it feels like not to have a headache. It is only when we have a calamity in our bodies that we fully appreciate of not, of not having any calamities in our bodies. Now the same goes for when we see somebody in trial, in pain, in suffering. We are told in the sunnah to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and learn from that person that you are not being tested. Are you showing, are you giving thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for not being tested? Now another one of the blessings is the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. All that will happen in the hereafter, the punishment of the grave will be lifted, the light of the grave will be given to those who are patient, those who are suffering will be under the shelter of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, their hisab will be made easy, their hisab will be made easy, <coughs> shafa'a will be given to them, precedence will be given to them in Jannah. Now we learn from the hadith that when the people who were tortured and persecuted, when the people who were patient at the times of calamities of this world, when they see the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see how much thawab and reward they get, 
they receive, they will, pre, they will pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Allah, send us back into this dunya and give us more punishment and torture in this world so that we can get more reward that we see today in the akhirah. So right now, nobody wants torture and persecution. Nobody wants to be in pain and suffering. But when the people of sabr, of patience, of taqwa, of iman, when they see how much Allah has rewarded them in the next world, on the day of judgment, they will want to come back to this world and will want their suffering to be doubled and tripled so that all that Allah has given them will be increased and doubled and tripled on the day of judgment. Now, if you don't believe in the akhirah in the next world, you will never be able to rationalize pain and suffering. It is simple as that. If you don't believe in the hereafter, how can you understand in the wisdoms of pain and suffering? Now, we believe that every person that is suffering, every child that is killed innocently, every mother that dies a tragic death, we believe that their iman, their taqwa, their sabr will come in handy and they will be far above those who didn't have that pain and suffering. They will be rewarded for each and every drop of blood and each, of, uh, each and every deprivation of hunger and each and every cry that they couldn't help because they saw another person being killed. So we firmly believe that in the hereafter justice will be done. The righteous will be rewarded and the wicked and evil shall be punished. Now if you don't believe in the next world, if you don't believe in the Akhirah, how can you possibly try to understand the wisdoms of pain and suffering and evil in this world? So my dear respected brothers and sisters, this world is a place of pain and suffering. This world is not Jannah. Jannah is called Darus Salam. Salam means the abode where there is no pain, there is no suffering, there is no evil. Salam means the absence of evil. Jannah is the absence of evil. It is not this world. This is the world of ibtila, of imtihan, of ikhtibar. A world where we will be tested. This is a world where we will see if we are worthy of Darus Salam or not. So the, the way that test is done is primarily to see how we react to evil, pain and suffering of this world. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the iman, the taqwa, the ikhlas needed to overcome all that this world is going to be testing us with. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين